Hey Sparkle Loves, it's Ashley Sue, and I wanted to talk today about how YouTube has changed my makeup. If you are a new makeup enthusiast and you find yourself taking a deep dive into the world of YouTube and reviews and beauty gurus, this is something you need to see so hopefully you can learn without making the mistakes yourself. Now this is actually a video that I have been working on since last autumn, knowing I plan on making it this April or May. And then today, right here on YouTube, I saw that Georgia Harris posted a video herself. Hopefully this will pick up on the camera here. Georgia Harris posted this about how being a YouTuber changed her makeup. And while a lot of our points coalesce, they come together, I don't think this video needs to be specific to how being a YouTuber changes our makeup. I think this is called like falling down the rabbit hole of YouTube beauty reviews. First of all, whatever you're watching all the YouTubers talk about that is must have, and they're all saying the same brands, is not must have. It is a trend and you may not know that if you haven't been navigating the makeup community for all that long. And dear God, the words, holy grail. I see them get thrown around all the time. This is my holy grail. This is my holy grail. Except for the fact that if you watch their video for a six month period, you will see they have six different holy grail foundations. You will see they have 10 different holy grail mascaras. It's like politics. You're gonna see people change their mind repeatedly and say that like one is their ride or die and then turn around and say something else is just like a month later. So, and if everyone's bought a certain palette, it's probably because there was just a product launch for that. Also, if you find a YouTuber that you really, really like and you vibe with them, don't think that just because something is their favorite product that it's going to be your favorite product. When I first got into watching YouTube, I like just binge watched tons of Tati's videos and that was great and all, except for the fact, you know, I assumed that if she loved it, it must be great for everyone and that is not true. A few products that she swore by, I can't stand. I regret it and that will be coming up in another video. Stephanie Nicole, I adore her. I adore everything she has to say. She likes liquid lipsticks. I don't. Also, tons of YouTubers do tons of first impression videos, which I think ought to be against the freaking law. And in my opinion, they are against all ethical and moral codes. First impressions videos are the worst. First impressions videos are not reviews. Ooh, it's so pigmented. And ooh, look, look how this looks. I'm really liking this. That does not tell you how it's going to wear throughout the day. That doesn't tell you if it's gonna break you out after using it for a week. It doesn't tell you anything. You know, if they have 45 different foundations to use any given day, they might really like that foundation they're using for today knowing that they got it for free or knowing that they never have to use it again. Oh, that was really nice to use once and never use again. Yes, currently I'm saying a lot of things about YouTubers and not so much how it changed me. I am getting there. In fact, that's kind of be my theme here for the rest of April. You're going to see how YouTube has changed me and how I'm clapping back to that change. <laughs> so how has YouTube directly impacted me. One year ago, right now, I owned translucent powder from Urban Decay. I owned, I think, three lipsticks, four lipsticks at this point. One was a gift. And that was it. That was my entire makeup collection. And it was April last year when I was looking for some sort of tutorial. I found Tati. There was something very soothing and trustworthy about all the information I was getting. I'm not at all saying that that was false. Totally trustworthy. But she seemed so relatable, like a sister who was giving me advice. And I've never had that kind of relationship with my sisters about, you know, trying on makeup and 
being girly girl together. So Tati kind of was my honorary sister, it was kind of like helping me through the hoops of makeup. It made me want to try a lot of stuff. At that time I was really kind of obsessed with wanting to try lipstick. It kind of rabbit hole down to wanting to try eyeshadows and then wanting to color correct my rosacea because I was looking for the right kind of powder for that at that time or concealer. So I found myself, you know, phone in hand, scrolling and looking for sales being held at Ulta. But the consumerism button kind of was triggering. And as it was firing off, I wanted more colors of lipstick. I wanted a lipstick collection. Not just three or four colors that were suitable on me. I wanted a collection of lip colors because it was really making me happy. And to be honest, a number of other things in my life weren't making me happy. The lipstick was just fun and I felt like I had waited 37 years to get to play with lipstick and by God, I was gonna play with some lipstick. You know, I was like, well, I'll just get, you know, like her eyeshadow looks so good and she says that it's this product. So I'm just gonna get like two colors of that product. And then you hear about all these releases and then if you are on Instagram, you know Trend Mood who is always posting spoilers for new launches that are coming out. You just see it and you think color and everyone else, everyone else seems so excited for it. The YouTubers are excited to try all these new releases. The comment sections are blowing up and it was, oh, I can't wait to have this. And there's a pressure when you are hearing YouTubers talk about a palette they loved. Like there's uh, two different Kat Von D palettes no longer are in existence. Um, I, one of them, I think it's Kat Von D and not Urban Decay, but it's like cosmic. It's a, uh, I feel like it was like circle shaped and big and awkward, but that the colors were laid out really beautifully. And I think it had something to do with astrology or something. And then there was the like, big metal mattes palette that everyone raves about and everyone loves and they were both limited editions so they're gone and that's it like you can't get them again and of course I wasn't even watching YouTube at that time so I did not get them. I feel regret for not buying them and I didn't even know they existed when they were out so you know you'll hear all this hype about things and you'll be like oh, god I probably would have loved that and that unfortunately kind of feeds your need to buy, buy, buy when a new palette is launched, when a new highlighter is launched, and when those words limited edition are thrown out and you see all the reviewers talking glowingly about, I'm shook. You're going to want to grab that also. And I know this because this is something that I have personally struggled with watching some of these videos, wanting to own it all. Also, being not only a YouTube watcher and makeup enthusiast, but being a YouTuber, all those things coupled together have the ability to make you not be yourself, not wear makeup the way that you'd wear makeup. Because, you know, I didn't realize until a year ago how all these beauty YouTubers are wearing false eyelashes every effing day. I mean, I like false eyelashes, but I don't generally wear them. And I really like, I, you know, a long time ago, I saw a Georgia Harris video where she pointed out she just won't. She's not wearing false eyelashes. She has deeply hooded eyes and it is not a look that looks right on her. It does not make her feel good. It does not make her feel like she looks her best. So she's just not doing it. And she still gets pressure from people in comments, but oh, if you just do it this way and you should try these and et cetera, et cetera. So there's this pressure to conform and live up to what other people expect. Like for myself, uh, I'm, you know, I am not a makeup artist. I am a makeup enthusiast, but there are things that I like about my makeup that are not considered acceptable by American makeup standards. For instance, today and some days, I actually do have my lower um, 
lower eye, whatever this region is called, I have it smoked out. I don't tend to do that. I don't like the way that looks usually. I don't, I mean, you know, I see it on a number of YouTubers and it looks great. I see it on some and I think you look, you look not the way I would look. But that's okay because you're you and I'm me. And I tend to like a really clean eye look. Even if I'm wearing a lot of eyeshadow, I like for it to be mostly, you know, on the top part of my lids. I can't stand the inner corner highlight that everyone is crazy about. Everyone wants this inner part of their eye, you know, eye skin to freaking beam sunlight out from it. And I think it looks pretty stupid most of the time. I do it on myself and I'm like, why did I do that? It looks dumb. These are personal preferences. But as a YouTuber, it definitely changed my makeup game for a while where I felt like I had to do inner corner highlight and I needed to be wearing false eyelashes all the time. And I'm really glad that I did those things and that I tried them and learned how to do them. It's good to get out of your comfort zone. I'm a big believer of that. In the end, I really needed to embrace who I am and what my style is. And I don't need, you know, just because James Charles, like, highlights down his nose and does that. So I just needed to realize I'm okay. Not doing those things, even if every other YouTuber is doing them, I don't need to do them. I just need to do me and be cool with you doing you, whether that's like highlighting everything or wearing everything all neutral or you just washing your face and putting nothing on it. All of these things are good so long as we're being true to ourselves. Now, I also want to say, I, you know, there's a huge consumerism problem. There are some deep divisions. There are super like, look at this beautiful bougie product and this product and this product and I love this and this is my holy grail and this is the best. And then you'll see people who rebel against all of it. People who are, you know, they're on no buys. They're like smitten with anti-hauls or just trying to pan, pan, pan. I think both are just reactions to much bigger issues within ourselves. And I'm gonna try not to go too philosophical here, but our need to own everything is probably from like a need of feeling abundance, worthy, of feeling like we can compare to other people, of feeling like we need convenience, of having it all at our fingertips all the time. I think people who deeply rebel against all that and are super anti-consumerism and pan, pan, pan and very regimented with the rules, I think they you know, I think those people perhaps are trying to tap into a feeling of security, a feeling of control, a feeling of being strong and not buying into all the things we're constantly having targeted at us. And there's a whole lot of other underlying psychology behind all of it, but it's still really frustrating to navigate that online if you are into makeup at all. And I say this because makeup should be fun. Buying makeup should feel fun. It should feel like something that you can happily display and that you can share with people in your life. It should not feel like something you have to hide from your husband or your wife. It should not feel like a dirty little secret. If any of your buying habits feel like something you need to hurry and stash somewhere quietly so it's not seen, you're doing damage to your relationship and you're doing damage to your life and you're doing damage to your psychology. And unfortunately, most of the online world is geared toward making us feel like we are supposed to be buying more things. So you know, that's a weird balance to try to strike and I get that. 
when Trend Mood posts a spoiler with hashtag bye bye money and finishes every single post with the question, what did you get? I worry that there are people like myself who are not collectors but feel kind of a weird pressure to start collecting makeup. You know, I've noticed that happen with some people and that's why, you know, now there's like this prevalence of YouTube videos of people responding with how, you know, I went broke and I'm doing a no buy because of makeup and how I'm addicted to makeup. And there's always been things that people collect. That's cool. If you have the money to do it and a passion to collecting makeup, it is no more silly than grandma's collecting Beanie Babies. And I used to work at the mall during the Beanie Baby fiasco of the late 90s. But when you look at these Instagram accounts, you know, and literally people have you know, just pictures after picture after picture of beautiful looking product, bougie and luxurious. Something I've really had to contain and fight is the urge to buy things because they're pretty. Lights, camera, lashes. I think it's actually a great mascara. It normally comes in a purple leather tube. However, last year they released it, very limited edition, in mermaid skin. And it was so iridescent and pretty, just really pretty. By the way, I hate it being called mermaid skin. That's creepy AF. And it's pretty! And it's the same price as like the regular tube is. And it makes me want to get it. Except for the fact that I got the regular tube on sale for 50% off during Ulta's 21 Days of Beauty. I, as a person, and my makeup as a collection hasn't been dramatically changed by being a YouTuber, but that's because I had to constantly fight it. It's a rabbit hole I don't want to get sucked down. You know, if you have a mascara you really like, you only need one mascara. If you have a foundation that looks great on your skin, you don't need to try other. I have one face. I have one day at a time to wear them, and I don't want to have a different concealer for every day of the month. I want one concealer that I can always count on. I want one brow product that I can always use. You know, eyeshadow and lipstick, you can switch those suckers out and like use a ton of them. But highlighter, how many highlighters do we need? How many variations of gold do we need for our face? A lot of money can go into your makeup collection really quickly and I am incredibly blessed that that has not been a giant sinkhole that has eaten me. But I in part think that that's because of the timing. You know, I came into makeup and YouTube late in 2017 and at that point the rebellion had kind of started. You guys just remember, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to make you feel happy. It's supposed to be like playing. It's supposed to be joy on your face and something that makes you laugh, something that you have a good time with, something that makes you feel pretty. It's supposed to be good. Like I want you to be able to be you. I don't want you to fall into traps. I've also seen online people who fall down those traps really hard, really fast, and they are buying, 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 and they're getting it all. And they are posting like, ooh, look at the swatches, and ooh, look at that pigment, and they still seem really unhappy. I guess what it comes down to is, you know, whether you are buying makeup whether you are training for marathon, whether you are starting a YouTube channel, whether you are going vegan. I think one of the most important things we can do is think about our motivation. Think about what is compelling us to make these changes in our life, compelling us to hit that buy button. What voices are we listening to that control us? But you know what? I just wanna like finish with two things. Two things, one, being that the Sephora sale just ended. The 15% off the bougie sale, it just ended. I bought nothing and it took 
so much willpower not to buy anything. I didn't not buy something because I'm on some sort of self-imposed no buy because I limit myself to what companies I'll even buy at Sephora. There actually wasn't much that I wanted or needed. I mean, there's always lots of fun stuff to get. Like, who doesn't actually want the Fenty Fairy Balm? If you tell me that you would not take that if you were gifted that, you are lying to me. It is adorable. It is bougie to an extreme. And who doesn't want the Fairy Balm? It's cute. But last night at 2.15, 2.15 a.m., which means the sale was on for another 45 minutes. I thought about the fact that Jackie Ina's Artist Couture Highlighter in La Peach was supposed to be coming to Sephora and I thought I wonder if it's there and I looked it up and it was and it was $28 and with the 15% off I would get it for oh, no $22.40 is that right? I think $22.40. And I was like, done. Sign me up. I've wanted it. It looks beautiful. People have said it is the nicest highlighter they've ever used. And I like the idea of supporting Jackie Ina. She's my girl. You only get free shipping at Sephora if you spend $50. So again, let's go to those brands that I'm willing to look at. Kat Von D. Basket Case Eyeliner. My dude from Green Day and it goes to a good cause. I was still a little short on how much I needed to spend in order to hit my free shipping. Then I started thinking, how many highlighters do I already own? Is it my job to buy Jackie Ina's products? No. I mean, I would like to. I hope to eventually, but like, do I need to buy it so that she doesn't starve? No. Do I need to watch my money so we don't starve? Yes. I literally wrestled with that until 3 a.m., ran the clock out, bought nothing, considered it a huge success. That sale is a ploy. I'm the product and my motivation to buy was in the wrong place. I really wish that any of you struggling could get strength just by hearing some of us talk about keeping the good fight. And that applies to a lot more than just consumerism, so. And I'm actually very thankful to Georgia Harris for kind of starting that ball herself, getting it rolling, and it going down the hill. I'm really hoping other YouTubers do videos talking about how being a YouTuber has changed their makeup and their buying habits, and some of the like self-awareness they've gained. Because I, I think it's a little fascinating, so. Sparkle on. God loves you exactly how you are, and so do I. God bless you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.